So my name is Valentina Scarponi. I am uh, one of the lecturers at the University of Sussex in the School of Life Sciences in the Department of Ecology and um, Evolution. We are um, really excited about the collaboration with Turtle Watch Egypt. We have now done uh, a few third year projects with you guys and we have now started a few uh, master's projects with you as well. So it is such a great opportunity that the students have to get to know the team and obviously you're here on site um, collecting all of the data that is available about uh, the turtles, where they go, where they stay, what they eat, if there's any injured turtles, which is obviously extremely important for, uh, for their conservations in the Red Sea. And students get the opportunity to really uh, understand what it means to do conservation um, on the ground. And that's pretty all that we really want to, to teach them is to um, get these transferable skills so they can understand what it means to do conservation on the ground in Egypt uh, but also apply it to other environments, other habitats and um, other situations and who knows hopefully get some, um, some exciting jobs like yours, right? <laughs>My name is Nathaniel Yon and I'm from Ascension Island and St Helena. Uh, I'm studying at Sussex University. I'm doing my master's degree at the moment in global conservation biodiversity. We're coming from St Helena and Ascension Island. We have a very important position globally for the turtle conservation projects with uh, green turtles. So I've always been surrounded by uh, nature, I've been always interested in nature as well and I'm thinking that pursuing global uh, conservation practices is going to help me to understand how to better implement conservation practices and engage with communities that can help conservation efforts for the future. My name is Sid Kuhlman, uh, I'm 22 from Seattle, Washington. Um, I did my undergrad in biology at the University of Washington and now I'm pursuing a master's in global biodiversity conservation at the University of Sussex. I grew up um, surrounded by animals and it's always been a huge passion of me um, to want to preserve the biodiversity on this earth and I think it's what makes the earth so beautiful so I wanted to do something that I felt made a real impact in the world. Good morning. Uh, my name is Karim Abdelaziz. This is my colleague Ahmad Hamdi. We have been working in Red Sea Diving Safari for almost the same time. This is our eighth year in this company. And we have already attended like uh, numerous presentations to the Turtle Watch. And every time this has been happening, we have always sat and listened. Uh, at Red Sea Diving Safari, we have three main villages. Marsa Shagra is the capital and the main one. And we have also Marsa Nakari, which is not very far from here in Wadi Lahmi, so we have three different locations in the south area of Marsa Alam. Uh, it has been many efforts the last 30 years uh, doing our best to keep this place the most protected, the most pristine, and this is why it attracts most of the fish species that lives in the Red Sea, and this is why it's still, I would say, it's like an aquarium. Uh, we have some resident turtles on site, we have a couple of hawksbill turtles, we have some green turtles, one of them is Bridge, and I have been diving with Bridge for almost seven years now. She's the cleanest green turtle we have on site. Every presentation Turtle Watch had done in our place, we have had many information regarding the turtles' life cycle, their behavior, and the most important part that I always find it useful for myself is how would the turtle behave if she's stressed or he's stressed or it's stressed by the people. So this information is very useful for me as a dive guide and it has been very useful and educational to pass it to my guests, to pass it to the divers that I'm diving with. And I would say nowadays everyone is aware of how to be very protective when it comes to diving, snorkeling, free diving with the turtles because as you may know at Red Sea Diving Safari it's not just about scuba diving we still receive many free divers, snorkelers on site and everyone is interested about seeing the turtles for sure it's one of the main attractions of Marsa Alam in fact snorkelers and free divers have the chance to spot them coming back to the surface and it has been very useful and very educational for our guests to be aware 
how to behave around the turtles, how to interact with the marine life, whether turtles or any other marine life creature. My name is Andy, I'm the base leader in Great Sea Diving Safari. Uh, I really appreciate the work of the Turtle Watch. It's very useful for us and for our guests also as well. Our customers, uh, they are very aware about the turtle. They know the kind of turtles and the different kind of turtles also as well. So Turtle Watch is a really nice effort to, to, to teach and it's really educational also as well. I really appreciate their work and thank you so much. Yeah, Master Chagra is uh, a wonderful place to come, uh, the Red Sea Dive Centre here, they're really good with their conservation practices and their efforts towards like maintaining the reef health, uh, they, they do quite well in organising your trips and stuff to really uh, help you to get the most out of your experience whilst also respecting the environment as well and making sure that you're not taking too much advantage of the, of the environment. My experience here at Marsha Chagra has been incredible. Um, the facilities are extremely luxurious. Uh, the staff is extremely welcoming and kind. And I mean, getting to go out and see this incredible uh, coral reef that we're surrounded by here is unlike anything else I've ever seen. Um, I think it's ideal for anyone who wants to see some biodiversity, um, get some sun, um, get out in the ocean somewhere new and somewhere just incredible incredibly beautiful. For my thesis, I want to look at some data we have on um, turtle density and locations, uh, as well as plastic debris density and locations to determine if there's a correlation, if uh, it might be affecting the behavior of turtle movement, um, if they're avoiding that debris, or if that debris may be harming their um, activity in any ways. My thesis, I'm working with Turtle Watch to see if there's any um, movement with the turtles between locations that they've already been sighted at and any um, correlation between uh, sites, so whether if it's a site for a nesting, if we can see if there's sites for feeding, if there's sites for any specific activity that we can correlate to that specific area. And then we'll be able to get a bigger picture of what's going on throughout Egypt, uh, throughout the coastline of where turtles are using the coastline. For me, um, getting to do this collaboration has taught me a lot about um, how to conduct marine biology. I had never snorkeled in my life. I had never done this sort of individual identification. So that's been incredible to learn and getting to learning how to collaborate with an organization and be part of something that's bigger than me has been incredible. This experience has been very eye-opening to what it takes to actually run such organizations as Turtle Watch Egypt um, and, and it's really shown me as well the the kind of uh, impact that citizen science can have for doing national and actually international projects and the results that can come out of it can be uh, very useful for, for science and for for conservation practices. Turtle Watch Egypt is a national-wide project where we are using citizen science like yourself uh, to collect data of turtles from dive situations. While you're on your holiday here at Marsha Chagra, um, please go ahead and as you're taking pictures of turtles, send them along to Turtle Watch to contribute to citizen science and make your um, holiday turn into a part of something bigger.